Meteorologist Joe Bastardi, your Saturday summary. Big stratospheric warming event going on right now, and that's uh, going to exert its influence over the next couple of weeks across the uh, United States with a lot of cold air pouring into the country again. This is uh, the GFS Ensemble. We go out to 84 hours, see what it looks like. Uh, that's 168. And then what will happen is it backs, backs off and reorganizes here. And by the time we get out to uh, well, what is, uh, ooh, let me see, uh, day 15 here. Let's move that off right there. You can see it takes over completely. All right, you see that? Now, I want you to look at that and look what happened in 1976. Uh, this is December 22, 1976. And uh, November was very cold. December was quite cold. And January 76 was one of the top five coldest months on record in the U.S. So there's a lot of resemblance uh, a lot of similarity to that, and this is by the time we get to December 8th. So we've got two events going on here. We have one that's occurring now and, and helping out with the cold air, and another one that's going to try to, uh, and I'm going to explain what could go wrong and why it could be blunted in just a moment. Um, another one that resembles the setup for one of the most bitter uh, months in history. Now, let's take a look again. Let's we'll go over to here, okay? This is what happened last year, all right? And you see that there's some warming here, but look at all the cold that was over here. Uh, in December of 18, turned very, very warm, of course, last year. And so did the four, uh, December 14. So this looks more like the 76 example right there. And there is that 1976 example. Now, here's one of the big problems we have here, trying to figure out what the Madden Julian oscillation is going to do. Because 3, 4, 5, and 6 at this time of the year are very warm. 7, 8, 1, and to some extent 2 are cold. This is a CFS V2 uh, saying that, uh, you know, we, we, we've, come, we've come through this period here and, uh, you know, turned cold in 7 and 8 across much of the country for November. It's backed off a little and then it comes back out. We go to the European and it goes back into 1 and then 2. Uh, but the longer range European brings it into these warmer phases. And there's a very distinct signature when it gets into the warmer phases. Uh, there's the uh, Japanese model. I'm going to show you that. Uh, let me see if I can put this up here, if I remembered to do this. Hold on a second. Uh, da, 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 da. No, I didn't put it on this. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I have it over here for you. Okay, I got it. See that? I knew it was there someplace. Now watch what happens here. Let me... Uh, let me uh, get this so that you can see. Let's go over to here. I always leave something off because, you know, my memory's going bad. What did I just say? Okay, here's phase one. It's quite cold. Phase two, it's warm up across the north, but cool. Uh, cool to cold. But look at three, four, five, and six. And seven and eight are the real cold phases. So go. you see what happens is the temperature correlation with the Man Julian oscillation you get into three, especially four, five, and six, guess what's going to happen? It's going to go warm up. That's exactly, see this blue line? That's December last year, right? Look what happened, right? It went into those phases. It got nice and warm. And the same type of thing happened. It's in phase five and six here in uh, December of 2014 after the very cold November where it was going through some of these colder phases over here. And so you had uh, December, November 2014 and 2018, uh, looking a lot like uh, what it looks like now, right? See that? How cold? This is this is greater than nine below normal so far for the month in Chicago. All right. And uh, when we look at November '76, it looked like this, but the December's were very, very different. Very different. Look at the December '76. It was very cold in here, and then January '77 was the aforementioned wickedly cold month. Um, and uh, what we had, what we had go on, and once again, I messed up here, over here. Oh, boy. I didn't put on the map I wanted to put on. Just hold on just a second. I, I've got so many, I've got so many maps here that I lose track of them all. I'm very sorry about that. But what happened in December 14 and December of 18, it got real warm. See? So we've got to watch those things. So we've got that stratospheric warming event which is arguing for a very cold December. And the Man-Julian Oscillation through the next 15 days argues for 
Don't argue for warm, and uh, it's looking like it wants to be cold, right? Versus uh, the European in the longer term, which has had a very warm bias across the United States. Can't see cold air after week four, but it's uh, the reason it sees it now is because it thinks the Man-Julian oscillation is going into those warmer phases, and I will take a look at that in just a moment. In any case, day one through five looks like, or uh, uh, week one, I should say, looks like this. Here's week two on the GFS. Here's week three on the CFS V2. Week four on the CFS V2. Week five gives us a Christmas week. And if that's true, much of the nation is at or below normal. And here's what December looks like on the CFS V2. Here's what January looks like. These are single runs, and they're at weatherbell.com. You can get them. And you, should, you should get on our site, at least give it a trial run. And there's, there's more than you could imagine to play with. And the winter itself, and we've got a cold winter forecast at all in this area. And we've had that since August. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's agreeing with us. It wasn't, though, 10, day, uh, 10 days or so ago. Here's the precipitation for the winter. And you could imagine, if you're going to have this amount of cold air and this amount of precipitation near or above normal, there's going to be a lot of snow in those battleground areas overall relative to averages. So anyway, in December, the 10 days of runs, 10 days of computer runs, ending 10 days ago, looked like this for December. Now they look like this. They're cooling down. You see, what I showed you was this, like the last single run. And what we're seeing is all these runs are getting colder and colder. So when we looked at the winter 10 days ago, the U.S., and you wonder why there's some forecasts out there that are real warm. Well, if you just look at the model, look at that. I mean, it's exactly opposite of what we're forecasting. Now it's looking like this, uh, looking colder and colder. Here's the, uh, uh, the uh, European Ensemble the amount of precipitation over the next 15 days. Here's a GFS snow. Now, I mentioned that I forgot to put some stuff on here, so I've got to try to put this on, and you just uh, give me a little bit of, give me a, just a second, un momento por favor, as we used to say in Mrs. Keene, Senor Keene's Spanish class, mainland regional high school. The sea surface temperatures are such, and I've pointed this out, I call this the four horsemen of the app, <laughs> atmospheric apocalypse winter weather-wise, warm pool over the northeast Pacific, warmer near the dateline than off to the east, warm IOD, this is Indian Ocean Dipole, warm in the west, cold in the east. And what that is associated with is sinking air around Indonesia and the eastern Indian Ocean. Now, you say to yourself, what does Indonesia and the uh, eastern Indian Ocean have to do with me wherever I am? When, when you get a lot of thunderstorms in here, promotes ridging across the United States. The release of heat into the atmosphere uh, sets the pattern off in a certain way that you see changes go on. And that's a Madden Julian. When you get a lot of thunderstorms here, that's a Madden Julian oscillation going into three, four, and five. So it promotes a warm up. We have the anti uh, event, an anti log going on now. It's not necessarily an analog to cold, but it's against the analog to warm. So you can see those sea surface temperatures, and they're warm off the East Coast, which means that there's a battle, okay? So if you're going to pump the ridge here, and what we, again, what we'd like to see for cold is cool Northwest Pacific, warmer Northeast Pacific, because uh, what happens is these air masses come over, if this water is normal to a bit below, all right, the air masses remain cold, they run into this, they clash, they create big storms right here, it pumps the ridge over... This, I get a kick out of everybody. Oh my gosh, the Arctic is melting and that's why this is happening. No, it's not that. It's what is happening where the heat is. And where the heat is is where the oceans, the, 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 the warmer they are, the more they're going to make a difference. And so what happens is this configuration, warm here, cold here, also argues for the trough over the eastern part of the United States. In the tropics, you want the opposite. So it's sort of like a four-corner drill here. We're warm, cold, warm, cool, okay? So we look at those things, we add up those relationships, and we go look and measure it up against the past. Chances are, if something happened before, it's probably going to be pretty similar again. It's not rocket science. It's a lot of grudge work, a lot of digging, a lot of going back and looking at the year after year after year and willing to go in and look at all these little, you know, I pulled out December 22nd, 1976 for you. Okay, as an example to ta to to match a past weather event with what you're seeing on a weather map forecast. So 
you know, there's always a danger of making a forecast from a forecast. But on the other hand, if you know where to go get something because you've looked at it rather than just, uh, you know, uh, just adding up and divided by whatever it have to come up with some consensus, you can try to pick out the chances for extremes. OK, now, warmth off the East Coast, if it's going to be trying to get cold in here, it's going to be a lot of fight going on. Right. Fight Club. The first rule of Fight Club is there is no rule. There, there is no fight club. Um, actually, in the atmosphere, that's all there is. Okay, outgoing long, long wave radiation because of clear sky here is less than normal because of clouds, thunderstorms. Right, the 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 uh, the, uh, the radiation comes in, hits the top of the clouds, it goes goes back out again. So what happens is this is where all the heat is being released, where there's a lot of convection going on. So you see that relationship there. That's opposite. See, the Indian, there's all sinking air over here. And as long as that tries to hold, then you're going to try to keep, uh, keep things cold or have the threat of cold, all right, for the U.S. So um, anyway, I thought we'd talk about that a little bit um, here, you're reading all the crazy stuff going on. It's not all because your SUV is pumping CO2 into the air, okay? So you don't have to worry about that. Tomorrow when you say your prayers in church, it doesn't have to be for forgiveness for your SUV, okay? Maybe something else, but not your SUV. All right. All right, that's it for now. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got.